This is a big game custom. It's pretty badass. Great bait. I just got a tip though. It's my first fresh paint of this and it is fresh. It is just brand spanking new right out of that package. So my buddy Pete, y'all know Wicked Pete Dog, right? Go check his channel out. I'm going to link that below. Pete's like, hey, that might have some mold release on it still. So before you put paint on that, sis, make sure you clean it. So we're going to do a little bit of warm water. We're going to do just a little bit of dish soap. Real mild. Dry it off real good. Make sure it's got no resin on it or residual. And uh, get to painting. using a book today I took a picture of this already so we're gonna flash this guy up on the screen probably right there this is the haplochromis granti or granti it is an African cichlid from Lake Victoria it's beautiful really stunning grays and blues in here um, looks like quite a bit of it I'll be able to mimic with a creature feature I'm going to cut a stencil in the top here, which means that instead of light to dark, I think I'm going to do the dark accents. I'm going to do a white primer on this. And because we're doing it on this big game custom, you know, he is strongly advised that I go ahead and take some warm dish soapy water, not too overly soapy, but just a little bit of lukewarm water with some dish soap in it, wash it down, pat it dry, hit it with a blow dryer, um, which I have done. So we shouldn't have any of that um, resin residual on here. We should be good to go, ready to paint. I'm going to do a white primer and then I'm going to add a seal coat. So we're going to do the white. You're not going to see the seal. Once the seal's on there, then we're going to come back and paint it because I want to make sure that everything adheres to this. Pretty stoked about it. Let's get into it. Just getting this white on here. And this is a double jointed glide. So I think it's a floating, maybe this one. I've heard lots of good things about this, about these big games. I looked them up on Facebook. They don't have a massively huge following, but it's a it's like a cult classic. These are very good baits. Super cool customs. It's mad windy outside, folks. This is going to be a tips and tricks. It's been a while since I've done any kind of epoxy or KBS deal. I'm um, going to be using the new formula in this. And for you guys that are looking to get the new formula, the lot number is 09120. I will leave a link in the description below for you guys. And what we're doing today, I'm in the process of doing... Um, a video the whole thing you guys will see for um, an African cichlid but this what I decided to do to make sure we've got proper paint adherence is I've seal or I've done a primer I'm getting ready to seal this and it's just gonna be a quick thin layer but because it's a swim bait I can't recall whether or not to be honest I've got any swim baits that I've sealed on camera for you guys before. So here's all I'm doing. This is super easy. Lemon, squeezy, easy peasy, all that kind of stuff that rhymes. Um, putting a thin layer on, making sure I get it into all the crevices, except for where the joints are. Just a thin layer. Obviously we're not gonna dip this or dunk it because it's jointed. So I'm going to leave this hang to dry probably overnight and then finish this video in the morning so that you guys will see a proper 
start to finish on this African cichlid, which I'm stoked to do for Van up in Massachusetts. It was an artist choice and uh, Gerald Novick helped me pick out. I had narrowed it down to like eight cichlids. Uh, I knew I wanted to do an African cichlid. But one of the cool things is, is that Van's not going to have an issue throwing this. Um, it does have a lot of the same characteristics as you would find in a bait fish um, and common colors. So it's got that beautiful blue, gray, black on the sides and then some red trim on the fins and I chose a swim bait for this particular one so that I could add that red trim on there so it's going to be super cool when we're finished with it but as you can see I'm just kind of going through the motions here while this is on the helping hands and I'm going to pull it off and then get the little bits that are not um, that I'm not able to get to but just nice even strokes we're gonna do this whole thing so that you guys can see how I do it I'm gonna leave that bill taped it's not gonna hurt a thing we can pull that off at the very end because I'm doing again super light coats on this just to make sure I've got proper paint adhesion so a lot of times I'll do this if I'm working with a wooden bait or particularly on this one where I know um, from Gerald and Pete, Pete Carter, Pete Rodents. Um, there could have been some residual on the resin mold from when they pulled it apart because these are all custom made by Big Game. And Big Game is out of, uh, I think, California. I want to say San Diego. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's where they're from. And this is a really cool double jointed. So we're just going to go ahead and everywhere I'm going to be painting this bait, we're going to go ahead and make sure that that's sealed up. And you can see that I'm taking this into all the crevices, that lateral line, just a thin enough coat to make sure that primer is going to adhere and we're not going to have any issues. Now on this I'm not going to be meshing it. I'm going to be using a series of hand cut stencils on this particular pattern as well as some other things. I'm sure I'll do that creature feature. I'm just taking the tip of the brush here and running that into the KBS and then coming up to make sure I don't have any over drip because we don't want it to look drippy and then just making sure that that's evenly placed on the entire bait. And I want to leave this on the helping hands as long as I can simply because it's easier to navigate. Now I just got a little piece of brush bristle on that and that's one of the reasons that I like to be wearing gloves if I'm doing a primer and clear coat first because it keeps my hands from getting messy. And these are fairly cheap brushes. I pick them up at Walmart. They come in a pack and you can get just the flat ones, which I love to do clear coat with. So you're getting all sorts of helpful tips on this particular video. But again, it's been a while since I've done this. So I wanted to make sure you guys saw how I do a primer and a clear coat. And then to be continued, because once this dries, we're gonna do the start to finish on this African, beautiful African cichlid, Haplochromus granti, or granti, however you choose to pronounce it. I'm sure the biologists have a way of saying it, and perhaps others have a different way of saying it. So I'm just, again, make sure you get that lateral line, both sides. We're going to come over and get that other side. Don't get anywhere near, which is why you never dip it. Never, ever, 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 ever dip a joint of bait. You've just wasted a hundred bucks. I'm, I'm not even sure what this costs, but I'm sure um, as a custom, it is worth every penny you would pay for it. So get down there. And that's pretty much it. So now you know how I do it. And then make sure you have good lighting because you don't want to 
have any bald spots, any spots that are missed. And then just run in straight, simple lines. Round brushes uh, are, are not recommended for work like this. You want a flat brush. And just make sure that you've gotten in all of that. Come back down. And then we got one more little spot to get. And that's this final little tail piece. And be super careful here because this one's a little wobbly. Don't get in those joints. Place that edge down that lateral line and then pull it back. And be super careful. That's the other thing about these swim baits. If you're new to the swim bait game, do not get any paint into here because you're going to have to put a tail. You're going to have to install that tail. And tails, more times than not, should not be clear coated. You never know what kind of rubber you're dealing with or what type of stuff composes those tails. And if it's a soft rubber, like this one is, I've taken a look at it, um, absolutely something you do not want to paint and or clear coat. We're going to leave that tail alone on this build. Uh, I might put just a little bit of, a after the fact, I might put a little bit of red on the tail if I remember correctly. Just not, you know, just by looking at it. I think that's going to be a red tail. But I may not do anything with it because the tail that came with it is, uh, it's like a yellowish color, which is fine. It's not going to be critical for us painting the cichlid, but there you go. That is how I clear coat a jointed bait. Don't get it in the joints. Don't get it in the inside of this. Make sure you put thin coats on. You can keep this on because I'm coming back. Remember, we're coming back and we're painting this. And because your, your coats are so thin on here, you should not need a drip wire. In fact, you really couldn't install one on here anyway. So thin, 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 thin coats, folks. Thin.